Okay guys, I've got a 20 minute game on the board and my opponent has started with the English so I'm going to play Dutch against that. This is a rated game. It's Mr. TB411 from Australia. Rated 528 and his comment is please let me win. So we shall see. In general, letting your opponent win is not really in the principles of chess. Okay, so preparing the bishop for Inketo. So it's heading me off at the pass there. I'm going to play knight f6. It's nice if you can get your bishop onto the long light square diagonal before your opponent. Um, still, I can't play that, and I would like to. All right, let's go proper Leningrad Dutch. I'm going to play bishop to g7 and then castle kingside it's a 20 minute game with no increment so I'm hoping I will be able to use the clock against my opponent on this one okay hmm okay, let's just play the bishop out So this is going to be a 0-16 game for me. And now we have knight out. So I could actually have time to fianchetto my light square bishop if I chose. I don't think that's a bad idea, actually. So if he puts his bishop there now, I've got time to put mine on b7. He's already taken over a minute. But that's okay, he's got plenty of time. So I want to use the clock, I want to pressure my opponent, but I do not want to rush. don't want to be in a position where I've used three minutes of my time and uh, he's taken more time and I make some stupid mistakes. So It's nice to see he's having a think. Oh, what, 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 hey? Bishop h3? No, I'm just going to grab that. So now the queen... Okay, this is unusual. I'm going to play d6, I think. Preparing e5, key square in the Dutch. e5, and then maybe e4 later. But this this is a weird one. Because that bishop's now got nowhere to go, other than back to where it should have gone on g2. Huh. Gonna also now play knight d2, sorry, knight d7 here, supporting this push. Might also castle first, get my rook on e8. Don't want to capture that knight at this point and just give him an extra pawn and help box his king in. He's not moved his e pawn yet. If he does, the queen's going to be the only defender of that knight. There's a possibility of queen a4 check. I can deal with that. I think castling makes sense. Okay. Well, I think this is now begging for pawn to e5, yeah? If knight takes, it just drops the knight and the capture with a pawn. I, mean, I guess he gets two pawns. So maybe actually knight there would have been a better preparatory move. Okay, I'm just going to castle now. But I'm happy that I've got the e5 move in. The knight is pinned against my queen. It's defended by the bishop, so I can move my queen. And it's defended by the rook. Even got ideas of maybe h6, kick the bishop back, and try and push the pawn up to g4 with a fork. That would be nice. So I'm quite happy with my pawn structure here. I've got a nice wedge going on. My opponent plays this pawn forwards to g3, he really should have his bishop 
there, helping to defend these light squares. If I get my queen, say, here, then this knight cannot move. Because of queen h1 mate. Right. Use your time, hunty. Knight in there is not too much of a threat. I can capture the bishop. Um, hmm. Knight d7 looks decent. So what's his idea with this? He's just building up his pawn structure, I guess. I'd like to get my my queen out of line of this bishop uh, pin, but also that's kind of a natural square for my knight to go to. And so I put my queen here, and then move my knight. It's a bit on the slow side. How about e4 now? e4 attacks this knight, but I know. Thinking I had a bishop attack there. Um, there it takes. Bishop takes, doesn't work here. Okay, I'm just going to move my queen here, I think. Sanity check. Looks okay. 100% comfortable about bringing my queen out, but I do want to put pressure on this diagonal. Also, the idea of pushing these pawns up. I mean, there are potential threats. So, first move, if bishop takes, I've got bishop takes. Bishop recaptures. Then, with the idea of this. I guess my queen can always come across in defence as well. in now, I do have knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. I think that's better for me. I win a pawn. Remove the head of this wedge here. Right, I don't see what the knight's attacking here. a6 looks natural. Send the knight packing. I'll have to retreat. Play it. Okay, that's fine. That was just a wasted move by by White there. Really did nothing. Okay. It's still on quite a good square, although it is undefended where it is. So now if we go here, takes, takes, I do have the opportunity to win material. It also gains space. So he's got his bishops on this side of the board, and they're looking down here. They're not looking towards my king, which I'm quite happy about. If he takes... <clears throat> got a couple of options. I'm going to recapture the bishop, I think. Because now this is on the card, so hitting two knights at once. Quite like the idea of bringing my queen across in front of the king. 
This is also a threat, g5, g4, with a fork on knight and bishop. Still got all my pawns on the board. And they're all fairly well coordinated. This one's actually hanging. Okay, so I can defend that by moving my queen across. I think that makes sense. This pawn's currently pinned. So, is there anything wrong with this move? But also, there's no dark squared bishop on black side now, so I could just put my king on g7, defend that way. I kind of like the idea of putting my queen there. Still got this threat. This knight is now defended by the queen, but now it's back. My bishop's backed up by my queen, so that would win material. Unless this knight can move with a major threat, and I don't think it can. I've been toying with the Dutch a bit over the last year or so. Tried the classical um, with mixed results. This Leningrad version um, not 100% sure of the differences really. You try and put your pawns on this diagonal here. Push that, he's got a like, knight takes, pawn takes, he's lost the knight still. This bishop's still looking pretty poor. Okay, looks like he might have spotted the threat. Well done. Now, slightly inclined to play this. I think that makes life difficult for him, yeah? But, if I play that, pawn takes, pawn takes, he has got queen takes. <clears throat> but then I'm attacking the knight again. So there, if pawn takes, pawn takes, queen can't take because he drops the knight. It does improve this bishop's prospects. If I allow him to take, Then I, I've got the knight. So I don't think he's going to want to do that. Should I push g5? Would that make sense? And then bishop can take on here. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Right, maybe it's time to improve this chap here. Knight d7. He's got no real really to go from there. He could come to here. Let's improve the knight. Bishop takes is not an idea because the knight falls. Sorry, pawn takes pawn. F5 is not an idea. So quite liking this pressure that I'm building up. My opponent's under 12 minutes, I'm under 15. This knight's defended by the queen only. This pawn can't take. See, I'm constantly just talking to myself and trying to reiterate the story of what I see on the board. This isn't an option because bishop takes there. This can somehow defend that pawn. I guess moving the bishop would defend the pawn. Hits the queen, but then maybe knight takes and pawn takes here. It's not really an option either. Might centralise my rook. My rook's onto E and F, that's not bad. Yeah, okay, he's got the same idea. Just play my move quickly. Still this pawn can't capture because of the knight. Undefended. And all the pawns are still on the board. This 
Pawns undefended, so knight c5 does come with a threat. But then, what if just d4? It's not bad. If knight there, d4, pawn takes, knight can't recapture. And I'm also threatening this as well. I'm threatening two undefended pawns now. Because with that move, he's just undefended b3. So I play this, and I've got an option of two queen and rook forks. You can defend both with queen c2. Nine and a half minutes now. I've got one, two, three attackers on this pawn. It's got one, two, three defenders currently. Thinking this bishop's now maybe looking less. Oh, that's just poor. Okay, so he's defended one pawn, but this now is going to win material, surely. I'm attacking the queen, queen's got no major threat, let's go for it. So this rook I think is going to drop. That would have just simply defended both pawns. Is there any problem with that move? This queen here. Not that I can see. But now we've got an issue. Okay, let's grab the rook. Under nine minutes now, and we've just won some material. Okay, I've got two attackers on this pawn. It's defended twice. Um, is f4 an option? I'd like to move this bishop so that this rook is defending the pawn. Then I can push g5, g4. Or I could play queen h7 so that when I push that pawn, the queen's defending that. It's under attack anyway. He's, he has got pawn takes. Pawn takes, bishop takes. If I capture, queen can't take, but knight can. It does open things up, though. Might open up ideas for this rook. Um, hmm. Or f4. Pawn takes, I think we're happy. Pawn pushes, I think we're still happy. Takes, knight takes. <coughs> three points up and up an up exchange and I'm up a pawn. I'm going back to f4 now. f4 takes, pawn takes, puts pressure on this pawn. Quite like that. The bishop still doesn't have many prospects. Could come to here, hit the rook. I'll just play rook e7 properly. Defend this pawn. Okay. Okay, so it's attacking that pawn, it is defended by the queen. It's also attacking my bishop, that's well defended as well. I could take it out, then one of these pawns will recapture. And 
I'm still relatively secure. Don't really mind too much if he wants to take out that bishop. I think that's okay. If I play c6, it kind of weakens my structure a bit. But it might prompt him to capture there. Also got this now as an option. So if I push, then I might be able to push c5 and kind of build things up again. I think we're okay there. Knight can't come here because queen will take it, or here. If he takes the bishop, that's fine by me, because I've got now pawns on dark squares. It makes that bishop a bit... Weaker. Good, okay. Now I think we recapture with a rook. Because I want my queen to support this guy in his efforts to go up there. Alright, okay, happy with this. This is okay. Eight minutes just over. Now we're going to push this. It'll probably mean the bishop retreats. Then I can push again, make the knight retreat. F takes g3 is a possibility. And double up the rooks on the f file, come after this pawn. That's pretty good. No bad thing to get my rook off the light square anyway. Okay, that is defended. So I think it's time now to push g5. But let's sanity check, I've got plenty of time. Yeah, it's okay. Bishop can't come there, there, there. Could come to there. So I'm now I'm getting my pawns onto dark squares here, now my dark square bishop is gone. I think c5 makes a lot of sense. Opens up lines for this guy. Long diagonal. Correct long diagonal. Okay, he's pushed his pawn! <coughs> right, that kind of blocks things up a bit on this side, but it makes his bishop again redundant. So now I think we need to switch our attention. This is an idea. H5, pawn takes, win material. Could even reinforce with my rook as well. There, pawn takes, bang. That's a possibility. I kind of like this move, just in general. He's running out of space now. This bishop again, very, very poor. It's only moved once to that square. Now I've got a bishop looking at this pawn, so the queen's tied to the defense of that. Knight has no options to move forward. Okay, finally he's decided enough is enough with the bishop. But again, it hasn't really got many ideas on this side of the board either. Where is it, where's it gonna go? He's got all these pawns on light squares. Could come to here and just defend that pawn. If h5 takes push, I'm liking that. The king's not got very many squares at all. Could also drop my bishop back and just target that pawn. Let's do that. Targeting this now. I'm expecting h3, then I might play h5. We're really going for the king. Very common in the, in the Dutch, you, you launch a kingside attack against white, who's castle kingside as well. He's down to six and a half. That's the threat. 
I mean, he's not gonna put his bishop out there, is he? <clears throat> whoa, 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 whoa. Hello. Um, mistake, I think. Bishop takes, now hitting the rook. Pawn can't block, oh, it can actually, it's defended by the knight, that square. The pawn blocks is fine. Might just even drop the bishop back here. Where is the best place for the bishop? I think that's okay. Still on this square, so now I can push the pawn. If takes, I've got <coughs> queen takes, I've got bishop takes. We're really opening things up now on the king side. Only a couple of sloppy moves, really, by my opponent. I, I don't really approve of this bishop move at the start of the game. I didn't get that at the time, and it's proved to be fairly useless. So I'm two pawns up. I've still got all of my pawns on the board. It's quite a rare thing. I still like the idea of rook g6 and then pushing through. Depends if he plays h3. Don't get that move. I mean, this is my weaker pawn. This is like a backwards pawn, right? This is behind my others. It is defended. He's taken his rook off of that potential line and onto this one. So it doesn't make much sense. Okay. I think, yeah, I'm just going to put my rook here. And create a bit of a battery with queen and rook. If he plays h3 now, I could even sack my bishop. So h3, g4, takes, takes takes, rook takes. The king's going to want to run away here. Bishop to here looks pretty sensible. Also get the queen, maybe the rook on the second rank. And that's another nothing move really. Right, I'm pushing g4. I think he can feel the clock ticking now. Does he want to push? Is that his idea? I could have pushed a5, I guess. I've got a free pawn now. a4 is hanging, but this comes with checks, so let's just play that. King can't go there or there. Can't block with a bishop, so he's got two options. But that would be mate, because I've rook g1, that'd be mate. So, okay. Um, rook takes. And now that wins the queen, doesn't it? Rook g1 would win the queen. Bishop h3 would also be very unpleasant. Rook here, king has to come back here, doesn't he? Then I've actually got queen g2. I think that might be checkmate. Yeah, the king can't go here because of the pawn. It's got to come here. And then queen g2, I think, is the end of the game. Checkmate. Good game. Good game. A few minor errors. Well, a couple of blunders maybe. But uh, all in all, very respectable. So my opponents got to say in the chat. Yeah, it's a good sport. Thanks for the game.
No, no worries. You played well. All right, so there you go. Playing the Dutch against the English, and in this instance, the Dutch win. Okay, thanks for the game. Um, yeah, let's do a quick review. So, the English opening with c4, and then responding with the Dutch. Knight to f6, very common in a lot of Dutch systems. Uh, so he's, you know, I really thought he knew how to play against the Dutch here, and I thought he was going to finca to his bishop. And then he plays his knight out in a kind of mirror. I play a normal move, <clears throat> but I'm still expecting him to play this, and he doesn't. He pushes d3, so I carry on with my. <clears throat> but now putting the knight here does allow me to get my bishop safely onto the long diagonal. Then he puts his bishop on the weird h3, where it's got no future. Now he castles. Now I kick the bishop. And he pins my queen, or pins the knight against the queen. Queen can move. Kick the knight away. That was a pointless attack. Kick the bishop, and we've traded off. Now I'm lining up this idea, but he spots it which is well played. Develop my knight, connect my rooks. He centralizes his rook and so do I. A4, and now my knight comes in looking at these two and he simply, I guess, just didn't consider queen c2, which would defend both pawns. So he's gonna lose material now. It goes down the exchange and a pawn. And now I'm pushing f4 and he comes in with his knight and I decide to kick the knight Trade it for my dark square bishop, that's fine, that's my least useful bishop. Rook comes across, and now we're starting to push. He counters, I block off, bishop runs away, and he drops a pawn. Bishop retreats. Then some very, very kind of pointless rook moves. The, these two moves serve no purpose whatsoever. Just allows me to build up to an attack. Uh, now he goes for a pawn break, but it's too late. Because now there, uh, blocking with the bishop. I mean, I guess king here might have been playable. I can't go over the rook, bishop takes, he's fine. But this simply just drops a piece. King goes to there, and it's checkmate. All over. Right, interesting. So, there you go. Dutch beats English. Um, useful game. Hope, you, hope you've uh, picked up some tips from that as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.